Hello, my name is Anthony Bretodeau. I'm from uh, Rennes in France. Um, today we will run a, a tutorial about uh, Galaxy Interactive Tools. Um, these tools are a special kind of tools in Galaxy and they allow to run interactive web applications directly from the, the Galaxy web interface. So using this kind of tools, you can launch things like Jupyter, RStudio or other specific web interfaces. So during this tutorial, we will see all the technical side of these tools and see how they work within a Galaxy instance. So we will start from a, a Galaxy instance already running and we will see how to configure it to support these uh, interactive tools using Ansible. In order to run this tutorial, you will need first to have followed other tutorials in the Galaxy server administrations. So hopefully you will know how to use Ansible using this uh, tutorial and how to install Galaxy using Ansible. The tutorial we will use today is um, this one, Galaxy Interactive Tools. So we just click here. And as you can see, the main steps of this tutorial are first to install Docker to actually run the interactive tools, how to install the interactive tool proxy that will redirect the HTTP traffic to uh, the, doctor, the Docker uh, running the interactive tools. Then we'll see how to configure Nginx and how to generate wildcard SSL certificates. And finally, we'll see how to enable interactive tools inside the Galaxy configuration files. Okay, so now uh, we will run the tutorial on a specific VM uh, that is provided by the Galaxy admin training session, which is num number three. And as you can see, Galaxy has already been, has already been deployed on this VM and is accessible at this address. And as you can see in the tool list on the left, there is no, not yet any interactive tools installed. There is no interactive tools category. So now we'll see how to configure our Galaxy to have these tools. So to do this, we need to go uh, using SSH to these VMs, the correct password. That's it. Now on this VM, you have a special directory, which is Galaxy, which contains uh, the Ansible roles and configuration that were used to install Galaxy on this VM. And now we'll modify this files to install interactive tools. The first step of this tutorial is to modify the requirements.yml file to add two new roles that are needed to install uh, interactive tools. So you paste it from the tutorial page. So the, the first role is the Docker role, which will be used to install Docker in the VM. And the second one, we install um, a specific uh, interactive tools proxy, which is just a small application uh, that will be used to direct the HTTP traffic into the Docker containers. GIE means Galaxy Interactive Envir Environments, which were the ancestors of uh, interactive tools. So we save this file and now we install these new roles using the, the Ansible uh, command. So as you can see, the first roles are already installed, but the two, the two new ones are being downloaded and installed and it worked, which is a great success. Okay, so now uh, that we have installed these roles, we want to use them actually. And uh, so we'll start with Docker. We have to configure it with two uh, variables, which we write into group vars Galaxy servers.yml at the end. So you copy it from the tutorial 
and that these two variables are docker install compose at false which means we don't want install compose as it's uh, docker compose as it's not used by uh, interactive tools and the second one is docker users which is the list of users that are allowed to run docker containers on this vm and now as galaxy will run uh, these docker containers we want it uh, we want this user galaxy to be allowed so we will use the galaxy user.name variable to to fetch the galaxy username from the whole configuration so we save this and the last step is just to edit your playbook which is named galaxy.yml and in the list of roles that need to be uh, run uh, by this playbook you just add this new role we've installed and configured okay so now we just run the playbook and we need to specify that we're using the ubuntu users user to run this role So the Docker role is actually running and installing Docker inside the VM now. Okay, so now Docker is installed. As you can see, I've skipped a part of the process to make this video not too long. It, it can take a few minutes on your VM. So now the first thing you can do is to check if docker is really installed so you can run a docker command and see if it works for example docker ps okay there are no errors so it means docker is installed and can be used on this vm which is great okay so we can go on the, to the next step which is installing the interactive tools proxy so this proxy uh, its role is to um, direct the traffic, the HTTP traffic coming from the web onto the correct uh, Docker containers corresponding to the exact uh, container that the user wants to use from the Galaxy uh, interface. Every time a user launches an interactive tools, it runs a specific container and this proxy ensures that each user will have access to its own container that he has launched. So to install this uh, proxy, you need has Docker to define a few variables. So once again, in group vars, galaxy server.yml, you can add a section with these uh, variables coming from the tutorial page. So the first one will tell uh, Ansible where to install this new uh, proxy, which version to use from Git, um, how to install Node.js. So we'll use Node.env to make sure we, we have the correct Node version on this VM. Um, the next one is telling which virtual env command we can use to, to create a new virtual env which version of Node.js we want, where to install the virtual environment, and um, setup services to specify that we want this proxy to be launched and stopped if we want using systemd. And finally, we have this sessions path. So this file, interactive tools map.sqlite, is a specific file which is written by the by Galaxy, every time a user launches an interactive tools, it is written into this database 
uh, on the disk uh, which container was launched, running on which port, on which machine, and which identifier this container has. And the proxy will use this information, so it will read this file to determine from the URL which is used by the user which container should be uh, should receive receive the HTTP traffic. Okay, so we save this configuration file, and once again into the Ansible, uh, the Galaxy Playbook. We will add that we want to run this uh, other role, which is name use galaxy dot um, use galaxy u g i e proxy. Okay. So now, once again, we run our playbook as the Ubuntu user. That's it. Okay, good. So it seems like the GIE proxy is now installed. We'll check that. The, is, the easiest way is just to look if it was correctly installed into its destination directory, which is the SRV galaxy slash GIE proxy. And there should be a virtual env there. Yes, it's there. And you should also be able to look at the log from this new service, which was launched using systemd. So if you run this, you can see it. So I, as you can see, it was started, but there was some errors. So I'm not sure if it worked. Let's see using systemd. Okay, systemd is telling me that it's working. Probably it was started one time and it failed and it was then restarted a second time and it worked. Uh, we can always look by looking if there's a node process running. Yes, as you can see, there's a process, a node process with the GIE proxy code, which is running and listening on this IP on this port, port 8000, and using this SQLite file containing the correspondence between containers and URLs. Okay, so this is the first step uh, that is down, and we'll see now how to configure Nginx on top of this. So now that we have this uh, interactive tools proxy running, we need to tell Nginx uh, that to use this proxy when it receives some HTTP traffic uh, directed, targeted to uh, interactive tools. So to do this, um, you just need to, con to change the Nginx configuration, which is already into uh, group vars and galaxy servers.yml. So if you look into Nginx SSL server, you have currently only uh, one server, which is Galaxy, which means it's, uh, it's for the main interface of Galaxy. And there we will add a new uh, configuration, which will, we will name Galaxy GIE proxy. So we save this. 
And now we will create this configuration as a template into the templates, Nginx, and there we write the same name we've written in the previous file, Galaxy GIE proxy dot J2. And now we copy the content from the tutorial and we'll see exactly what it means. So if you look at the other configuration, which is Galaxy dot J2, is directing the traffic from the host name of the, of the VM, which is server name here. And it directs it to uh, a server, a USGI, a UWSGI running on uh, the port 8080 on this VM. Now, if you look into the new configuration we're adding, it says that every web traffic received by Nginx with a server name uh, prefixed with interactive tool. So for example, uh, something.interactivetool.gat-3.oz.training.galaxyproject.eu, which is the host name of our VM today. Every traffic coming to this host name will be directed into the GIE uh, proxy which is running uh, on the same VM. So the GIE proxy port is 8000, which was configured uh, on the step before. Okay, so we run again the playbook to update the Nginx configuration like this. Okay, so you have seen in the logs that the Nginx configuration was changed. So that's why it's written change three here. So Nginx now should be able to direct the HTTP traffic uh, correctly to this new uh, proxy. The next step of the tutorial is getting a wildcard SSL certificate. So currently your Galaxy server is configured to have a certificate generated by Let's Encrypt for the host name of the Galaxy instance itself, not for uh, interactive tools. Interactive tools have specific host name with uh, auto uh, random uh, number uh, at the beginning of the host name. So you need to have certificates which are able to handle this. There are several methods to, to configure this, and it depends a lot on um, the way DNS was configured uh, for your training. Um, so for this uh, session, we will just skip this, session, this um, step of the tutorial, which means you will only get a warning from your web browser when you go and try to access an interactive tools from Galaxy, you will see how this, um, this certificate is not valid for this host name, are you sure? And you will say yes, and uh, it should work. For a production instance, you will have to configure uh, a wildcard SSL certificate correctly, uh, depending on the configuration of your server. So now we have a Galaxy server which is running correctly. We have an Nginx server which is configured correctly, directing some traffic to the GIE proxy which is installed and running and configured properly. And Docker is also available for the Galaxy user. So all we need to do now uh, is to configure Galaxy to uh, enable interactive tools in, uh, in the web interface. So to do this, um, the first step will be to write um, a job, a toolconf file specific to interactive tools. So we will write it into templates, galaxy config, and we will name it toolconf.interactive 
static.xml.j2. So this is a new toolbox where we have one section, which is named interactive tools, and one specific interactive tools, which is etercalc, which is pre-installed inside the Galaxy code. So we save this. And now we need to tell Galaxy what to do when the user executes an interactive tools, which destination to use. So to do this, we modify another file, which is a job conf file, which already exists. We are lucky. So as you can see, the, the, there is already a destination which is uh, running jobs into the local VM, which because our VM is not currently connected to another cluster like Slurm or, or Condor. Now we will add a new destination, which is specific to uh, interactive tools. So in the list of destination here, we add this block from the tutorial. Just remember to remove the plus sign at the beginning of each line. Okay, so this is, you just need to modify this to match the configuration pre-existing. So there is one plugin, which is the local plugin that will run jobs locally. Here we want to have a destination that will run Docker containers locally on the VM. And for this destination, we say that we want to use Docker. We want to mount a few volumes inside the, the containers. We'll talk about it a bit later. We don't need to be a sudoer to run Docker containers because Galaxy is allowed the user galaxy is allowed to route containers and some other options like the network mode for Docker, uh, if the Docker should be automatically removed when it's finished and, uh, and that's it. So we have this destination and now we need to tell that the new tool we have added just before, etercalc, needs to use this new destination, which is named interactive local. Okay, so this file is ready. And now we need to make sure that um, these configuration files are properly used by the roles. So we go into group bars, galaxy servers, .yaml. There should be a galaxy config uh, tool config files. somewhere. No, there's not. Okay. So we just need to add it at the end or here, maybe. Yes. Here will, here will be enough. So this is from the, the tutorial. You just have to copy and paste. And now inside the Galaxy uh, configuration itself, you need to tell that there is a job config file to use. This was already done before, so we don't repeat ourselves. But we need to say that here, we want to enable interactive tools into Galaxy and to use this SQLite file that was configured just uh, in the previous steps. We save this and We also need to tell that we want to, uh, to use a template we have just written, which is named like this. So this is the list of interactive tools uh, to compile. So doing this, we're ready to, um, to tell Galaxy that it should now support interactive tools. We just need to run the playbook once more like this. Oh, 
Okay, so the playbook has run and uh, did a, a few changes, as you can see here. And so if everything went well, you can just go and see if um, the interactive tools are appearing in the web interface of Galaxy. And oh, it's so magic. I reloaded the page and there's a now a new section which is interactive tools here with Ethercalc which was added that you can click and see like this. So now it's time to test this new interactive tool. Um, to do this, uh, you need to upload a file, a sample file from the tutorial again. And we'll say it's of tabular type. So if you look at the file, it's just a tabular file. It should come. So it's just a tabular file with three columns that can be uh, viewed. Uh, so Ethercalc is a Excel-like uh, web uh, application, which, which um, you will see just soon. Uh, it's a very simple form. You just have to select the tabular file you want to, to, to show into uh, this web spreadsheet, and then you click on execute. And that's it. So when you run an interactive tools, you see this message. So as you can see, it was a disaster. Etercalc failed to launch with a big red arrow. I went to the debug icon there, and I had this kind of strange errors. Uh, and the first one was forever command not found. So forever is one of the commands which is run inside the, the tool script uh, when it's run inside the containers. The fact that it's not working means that the command was uh, Galaxy tried to run the command outside the container just as a normal tool, which fails because the, the, the what's installed into the container is not available outside the container, of course. So uh, to debug this, I just went into the console by SSH and I looked at all the files that we modified just before. And I've seen an error in one file, which is jobconf.xml.j2. And as you can see, I made a bad copy and paste here. So I correct this and rerun the playbook. And let's wait a little. Okay, so the playbook is now uh, has now run and everything is finished. It's time to test second time, hoping that it will work this time. So we go there and we launch again at our calc. Crossing fingers. <laughs> So the first time you run an interactive tool, it can take a while to start because the first step is to download the Docker image that Galaxy needs to run this tool. So depending on the size of the image and the network where Galaxy is installed, it can take a while. Okay, so now our interactive tool is running um, and you can see it from here that there's a link here click here to display. So you just need to open it. I will open it in a new tab. And so here you have an error 
uh, which is in French, <laughs> which means that uh, we have a certificate problem as um, the certificate for this domain, which was, was assigned randomly. So you see it's a random number followed by interactive tool entry point dot interactive tool dot the rest of the Galaxy URL. And the certificate was also um, only made for this part of the host name. That's why you need a wildcard SSL certificate. As we don't have one on this VM, we will just go into advanced parameters and accept to, to, to use this invalid certificate by clicking here, which is dangerous, say scroll. And as you can see now, EtherCalc, the web application which is running uh, in a Docker container, is a pairing. So it's bootstrapping at the moment. And you should see the data set appearing inside the spreadsheet, uh, inside the, that, the data set that you selected from your history. So once you're here, you can use this web application just as um, just as you would use it if you had installed it on every, anywhere outside Galaxy. You can share this URL with everyone you like. It will be accessible. And uh, so of course it's in French, but it will be adapted to your web browser. And technically, if you go and look inside the, the, the terminal, seconds here we are so we are inside the vm and we have launched an interactive tools and if we look at docker ps which will list every container uh, running currently inside the vm you will see that there is one container which is named uh, like this a random number and that uses this image with an, which is an etacock uh, specific uh, image for Galaxy and it's running since two minutes ago and listing on this random port um, and that's it. So when you go and, um, and access the EtherCalc uh, interface, so your, your web traffic is uh, passing by the Nginx proxy which sees that there is an, a long host name with a random number which directs the traffic to the GIE proxy. The GIE proxy from this random number is able to know that it should direct the traffic onto the port uh, 49154, which is running on the same VM. And, and that's it. So you have access like this through two proxy to the containers which is actually running on the VM, but that could be running on any uh, Slurm uh, or Condor cluster uh, if you want. So we have just one problem with using um, interactive tools like this. It's a security problem and it's the last step of our tutorial. So if you look at this command, that you need to run as sudo. <laughs> like this, yes. This is all the, the mount points, the volumes that are mounted inside the containers that is still running for Ethercalc. And as you see, so the syntax is, the first part is the directory on the VM which is mounted into this pass inside the containers. And the last part is uh, specify whether this mounting is done in the read-write access or read-only access. And if you look carefully, you see that the end of the list concern only the job, so it's okay. The, the container needs to access the, the working directory of the job. It needs to access to the tool directory where the XML of the file is and things like that. But the first one is very dangerous because slash data is the directory of your VM where every data of your Galaxy server, every, every user data is stored, which means 
potentially SRCalc can access any data from Galaxy, from any user of Galaxy and modify it if you want. This is um, a matter of trust with uh, interactive tools. We know that with EtherCalc, there is fewer risk to actually be able to modify this data. But for other interactive tools like Jupyter, you could, uh, as a user, do really bad things. And it's really bad for security. So there are a few possibilities to, to fix this security problem. And um, we will see how to do it. And um, so the best option is to use an embedded Pulsar destination, which will allow Galaxy to run the containers by and mounting only the necessary um, that data sets that are needed by the, the containers. So the data sets that were selected into the form of the tool. So to do this, we will modify a few files and, uh, and uh, to configure it properly. So the first one is a new file. Uh, it's templates galaxy config, and we will name it pulsar app.yml. No, .yml, sorry, <laughs> .j2. And we'll write this content into this file from the tutorial. So it means when we run a con um, uh, containers for an interactive tools using Pulsar in embedded mode, we will use a special directory where per job directories will, will be created. A directory where some uh, specific Pulsar state information will be stored, which will be at this position. A directory which will be used by Pulsar to determine where dependencies are installed, even though with containers it's not really needed. And finally, we'll tell how uh, we we'll tell Pulsar um, how to manage uh, job uh, job queues. So here we just run job on the same VM as the Galaxy server because it's the embedded Pulsar mode. So once you've done that, you just need to change the uh, destination of your tool. And to do this, as usual, it's in the same uh, config file, which is templates, galaxy, config, job, conf, .xml j 2 And here, you will add a new plugin instead of local, you will need to add this new plugin. So it's named Pulsar Embedded. It's a runner with a specific uh, class and it's configured by the file we've just uh, written before, at least the template we've written before. Okay, and now that we've defined this plugin, we just need to modify the interactive uh, destination to say that we want to use this new plugin, which is Pulsar Embedded. And we need to add just two other options, which are here. Once again, copied from the tutorial. Okay, now we need to change some variables to say that we have a new uh, file to uh, new configuration file for, for Pulsar that needs to be copied into the, as, uh, the Galaxy directory. So here we go. We save this and also we need to, to write a specific, wait, uh, 
I'm lost. Okay, I found it. <laughs> In this mode, Galaxy needs to have a specific um, variable which is named Galaxy Infrastructure URL so that the containers and Pulsar knows exactly at which address the Galaxy server is running. So we just write it like this an inventory hostname uh, is a variable which was defined, which is defined by, um, by Ansible. Okay, so now we just once again run the playbook like this Ansible playbook dash u into galaxy.yml and we wait a little. Okay, so the playbook has uh, finished and now we'll see if it works by going to our web browser, which says we were disconnected, it's not a problem. So now we can stop the container that is still running from before, delay the failed one because I don't want to see red in this tree. And now we we run again at our cock like this. So the container is started and we can go here and see if it's working. Once again, the certificate uh, warning that we ignore. And it seems like it's working. Yes, we see all that data set we selected. So now let's look at the Docker container, which is running and see if it's really using Pulsar. So we should still have a Docker running. Yes, since 58 seconds. And now we can run the, the same command as earlier to see which volumes are mounted inside the container like this. Okay. And here it's much better because as you can see, only the, the directory related directly to the, the, the job are mounted inside the containers. So everything that, that contains the six means it's a job number six on this instance, which is specific exactly to the job. And the only other directory which is mounted is tool data, which is the reference data of Galaxy, which is fine to be shared to any jobs in read-only mode. And so the, the slash data directory is not uh, mounted at all in the container. So the container can't access it and nobody can uh, uh, read or destroy data from other users. So that's a good thing. Okay, so we have finished um, this uh, tutorial for now. Uh, just remember that interactive tools are, are still quite young, so there may be some a few bugs or, or, or things not working exactly uh, uh, ideally, um, but it should improve progressively in the future. Uh, if you look back at the tutorial, I strongly uh, recommend you to fill the feedback form, which is at the, the end of the tutorial here. It will help us a lot to improve the training material uh, based on what you liked or didn't like in this tutorial. And finally, if you have any problem, you can always join us on the Gitter channel of, uh, of admins of Galaxy Project for the interactive tools or GTN for everything related to the training material here. Thank you for following this tutorial.